Hello everyone. In my last video, I showed a couple examples of ways to make your class in lessons a little bit more interactive with students using PowerPoint. There was one PowerPoint that I showed where the student was able to click on the picture like this to show their answer, whether it was correct. So they click on the blue and the blue. And if they are incorrect, we have the sad face behind the wrong answer. So a couple people wanted me to show you how to actually make one of these. Since this one I did make on my own, the other animation, the matching game, was a pre-made template. So I'm going to walk through the steps to make a PowerPoint that looks like this that you can use in your classroom with your students. Once you learn how to do it, it's actually very simple. It's just a little time consuming depending on how many that you want to make. So I'm gonna start with my blank slide. So the way I did it was I made the white little boxes so they could easily see the pictures. You could also just use a picture. You would just need to make sure the picture was large enough and um, the image behind it is small enough so it's hidden behind the picture. So I'll show you both ways to do that with the white box or just with, a, with an image. So let's say my word is dog. So I would just insert the text box with the word dog at the top. You could also use, do the opposite. You could actually put an image at the top and have words for them to click on in the white box, or you could do it the way I did. There's many possibilities for this. So let's just say my word is dog. I'm not gonna do anything fancy with that since that's not very important. So now I'm gonna make my white boxes. So I'm going to just insert my shape. You can do different shapes, circle, square, whatever you wanna do. So I'm gonna make my boxes. Again, I'm not gonna worry about the size right now. And I'm going to change my fill to a white. And I always like to have my outline a little bit thicker. So that would be the weight, make a black outline. And the weight, I usually do three or four and a half. So we have a good outline for the boxes. Since I want three choices, I'm just going to copy and paste three different boxes. Again, I'm not worried about how nice it looks right now. So I have my three boxes. Now I'm going to make find my images that I want to go behind those boxes. The reason I'm doing that first is I want to get my template. And that way I can just copy and paste this template before I add any of the other images. It'll just be easier if you're making more than one slide. So again, you can choose any type of image that you want to be behind the boxes once they click on it for the correct answer or for the incorrect answer. For these, I just went to insert pictures and online pictures, or you can just go on a browser yourself and find images that you want. So I just searched for happy face emoji. And the important thing is you want it to be, to have a transparent background. So sometimes it's hard to tell when you search in PowerPoint whether it's transparent or not. So let's see if this one is, yep. So this one has a transparent background so I don't have to worry about any white space around it. And a lot of the pictures will have words under it. I just delete those. So I only have my picture and then I want to size it how I want it to be behind the box. I'll make it a little bit smaller. That's about a good size there. Okay and then for my incorrect answers again you could do just an X. You can do the sad face like I did whatever you want. So let me look for my sad face emoji. There's many different options here. I'll just do the one that I did earlier because I know that is a transparent background. There it is. And again, I'm going to delete those words and size it the way I want it behind my image. And I'm only making two um, just to keep for my template. Sometimes I like to have all three answers be correct. Sometimes I like just one answer correct, two answers correct. You can just copy and paste those however you want them. So once I have this main template, what I do is I just make a duplicate slide. That way, once I finish this one, when I go to my next word, it's a lot easier for me to complete it. I don't have to redo the um, emojis. I don't have to redo the boxes. Everything is set to go. Now I'm going to add my images into my white boxes. 
So let, my word is dog. So I'm going to search for pictures. Again, I'm going to do online pictures here. And I like clip art pictures, so I'm going to do dog clip art. And I'm going to just pick a couple. These aren't as important for having the transparent background as long as you can fit them in the box since my box is already white. But if you wanted to find a transparent, you could definitely do that too. So I'm going to have my dog in the first one. And then I'm going to choose another picture for my second box. Let's do a cat. Oops, cat clip art. So here's my cat. This one is transparent, so it's easier to fit in there. And then let's just make my third one also a dog, a different dog. So this one will have two correct answers. So let's see which dog I like. Let's do this one. I'm going to erase these words. I don't want those showing up. This one will be a little bit harder to fit but we can do it. There we go. Perfect. So now I have my three images, but when I click on these, they're two separate images, the picture and the white box. So I've got to combine the image with the box. To do that, I'm going to first click on the image, then I'm going to hold down the control key. I'll do that again. So I click my image hold down the control key, and then I want to click between the image and the outline of my box. And you're going to notice, you'll see the outline of the white box, you'll see the outline of my image, I can let go of the control key. And then I'm going to right click, go to group, group. Now it is just one image. So here I can separate my cat from the box. Now my dog and the box are one image together. So I'm going to do the same thing with my cat. I click on my cat, control, click on the inside of my box. I see both are selected. Right click, group, and group. Now they are one image. My third box, control, click on the box, right click, group, group. Now these are one image. So the reason I made my template before adding those images is because I don't want to have to ungroup and delete those pictures. So that's why I made that before I added my three images to the boxes. So now I have my three choices grouped together. Now I'm going to put my emojis behind the correct and incorrect answers. Since I have two correct answers, I'm just going to make two of these. So I'm going to put it where I want it. And then after I have it over my box, I'm going to right click on the emoji and send to back. Now, if I move this, it is behind the image. Same thing with my first dog. Sometimes this will happen where it's behind it. You could just drag it that way. It'll still be behind there. Or the other option, if you have that, you can't see where it is, is you can bring it to front, position it, and then send it to back. Either way works. So here it's already behind. I'm just going to drag it. I can kind of see with these little red dots where it's going to be. Doesn't need to be perfect. So now it is behind my cat. Okay, so now I have my emojis behind my pictures. Now I need to make it clickable. So to do that, you're going to go to the animations at the top of the PowerPoint. And I'm going to click on the animation pane. The reason for the animation pane, it makes it easier to know which animations you're clicking on and which ones you are changing. So my animation pane shows nothing right now. So now I'm going to click on my first image. Remember, they are grouped together. And I'm going to click on add animation here. I want it to exit because I want it to disappear when they click on it. And you have many options for it to exit. I usually just do the fade, but you can do any exit you want. When I click on fade, you're going to see a quick preview of what it looks like. So it shows how it fades out. That is not the end of the animation because as you know, when you do any type of animations with PowerPoint, when you click anywhere on the box, the animation happens. Well, we want it to only happen when they click on that box. So that's where the next step comes in. And that's why I have the animation pane open. So it tells me the name of this group. It's group 22. So when I click on the box again, 
I'm going to go to trigger. This is telling the PowerPoint how it's when it's going to animate. How am I going to make it disappear? So I'm going to go to trigger on click of. And because I have so many different animations in this PowerPoint, that's why it's important to know the name of this group. So I know it's group 22. So go to trigger on click of group 22. So it knows this is the one to click on to make it disappear. Done. Now I'm going to go to my cat again. I'm going to click on the box. I'm going to add animation, fade for the exit. I see it did, it worked. Now this group is group 23. So I have to first click on the, the picture again. Then I go to trigger on click of, and now I already forgot group 23. So trigger on click of group 23, done. Now I'm gonna go to my third image. Here is my dog. Again, I want to add animation, fade for the exit. I see that it's working and this is group 24. So I need to click on the box again. Don't forget to do that. Click on the box, trigger on click of group 24. So now I should be done. So now if I test it out, I always test every time I make a box because I have made mistakes before where I thought I clicked on something and I didn't. And I realized when I tested it out, it didn't work correctly. So always test out. I always go to the little slideshow at the bottom here and I should be able to click on any of these boxes in any order to make them click. Here's my dog. Here's my dog. Here's my cat. It worked. So notice if I go to it and I click outside of these boxes, it's going to go to the next slide because it only is triggered when they click on the boxes because that's how you set it up. So like I said before, you can also do it with just an image if you wanted to. So let me make a new slide here real quick. So let's say I wanted to just have a picture of a dog. So let me pull up my dog clip art again. And I'm just gonna do one example for this. Oh, that one did not have transparent background. So let me choose a different picture. Let me do my cat clip art. And like I said, it's gonna be important to have a large image for this because, or you're gonna to have to make your smiley face or sad face a little bit smaller. So if I wanted to use my sad face, copy and paste. So let's say this was one of my options. See, I'm gonna to have to make this really small to be able to fit inside the cat and make it sure it's hidden. So I can send it to the back. And this time I would only need to do one thing with this cat. I don't need to um, group it with anything because it's just the image by itself. So with the cat, I would do the same way I did the exit animation. Go to animations, add animation, fade. Again, I would need to make sure it's on the click. So I would go, it's picture six. So I would trigger on click of picture six. So when I go to it, if the student was to click on the cat, it would fade and show the picture underneath. So there are a few options there of how you want to make it. It might be a little bit easier if you don't make the white box, but the white box makes it easier to hide things behind the image. So you don't have to worry about making the picture large enough or making the image underneath it small enough to fit. So hopefully that is clear and you're able to make those images and make those animations. If you have any questions, just let me know. Goodbye and happy teaching.